Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. In 1930s China, a laborer was involved in building a bridge over the Songhua River in northern province of Heilongjiang. At that time, Japan was attacking China and both the countries were involved in a brutal war. The laborer thought that this skull was unique and might be of some value. But he hid that skull in a well for 85 years and only in 2018, he revealed its existence to his family members who later donated it to the Chinese Museum. Now paleontologists as well as fossil experts have looked at that skull and they have revealed a previously unknown branch of human lineage and probably a new species as well which they have labeled as Dragon Man. So who was this Dragon Man and what did he look like and what do we know about his relationship with us? Let's talk about it today. Now this fossil skull was discovered in the Harbin city of northern province of Heilongjiang. So this is a state of northern China where it was discovered. And in popular terminology, Longjiang is actually the name of the province, which stands for Dragon River in Chinese language. And that is why the fossil has been referred to as Dragon Man. This is the Songhua River whose riverbed contained that fossil skull. Now three papers published in the Cell's Innovation Open Access Journal give a detailed analysis of various characteristics of this fossil skull. No other vertebrae or any other parts of the skeleton or any other parts of the body have been recovered. We just have this fossil skull without the lower jaw. So all the details and analyses have been made only using the skulls analyses of different features because there is no genetic data that we have at this point. This is the Harbin skull. It has a mix match of different features. Some of these features are pretty ancient, which belong to the earlier lineages. For example, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo erectus, and some are very similar to those in modern humans. For example, the Asian features include this prominent brow ridge which you may have also noticed in Neanderthals. Also very deep set eyes as well as a huge skull. This skull, the brain volume is estimated to be 7% larger than human brain volume. So this skull was definitely belonging to a lineage which was very close in features of brain size and volume to Homo sapiens. There was a bulbous nose based on the anatomy of the nose here and the nasal cavity. And there are some features which are found in modern humans as well. For example, the cheekbones. These are pretty delicate, pretty flat. These are very related to modern humans. There is only a single tooth that has been left intact here and surprisingly it has three roots which are very rare in modern humans. Premolars, molars, incisors, canines all these have either one or two roots. Very rarely do we have a tooth with three roots. So this suggests a lot of evolutionary mixing and matching going on and we don't know how to place this lineage in the human ancestry yet. So according to the authors of the study they have a unique take on the whole thing and they propose that the Harbin skull along with many other previously identified Chinese fossils that I'm indicating in red here, Jin Yushan, Hualong, da Dali and Xia He. Xia He is actually a Denisovan which is another lineage that has been recently identified. So they are in a lineage which branched off from modern humans and Neanderthals are totally different. Now this is very different from the accepted or the currently understood history of human ancestry because according to currently accepted human ancestry, so Neanderthals and humans had a common ancestor and they diverged later on to form Neanderthals which occupied much of the Europe and humans which spread to Asia and other parts. But according to the analysis of the Harbin skull, and based on the anatomic analysis, they are proposing that they are somehow more closely related to modern humans 
as compared to Neanderthals. So this is a bit controversial and it is sparking a lot of debate among the paleontologists. Now what about Neanderthals? Neanderthals as we currently know they probably existed about 150,000 years ago all the way until 45,000 years ago. They had brain size, culture, art, very similar to modern humans. They occupied a range of territory going from Western Europe all the way to the far reaches of Russia. So they had a pretty broad range. And there has been recently the discovery of Denisovans. Denisovans, they have been known from only a few remains. One of the first remains that was identified was this molar, this molar tooth that was identified in the Denisova cave in Siberia. And that is why they are called Denisovans along with the pinky finger of a small girl. This is the Denisova cave where the middle finger as well as the molar was found. And this is the Baishia karst cave in Tibet. It yielded only a fragment of the lower jaw. So a very incomplete fossil, but whatever information we have from Denisovans, it is partly from that molar, a few remains, as well as this uh, pinky finger. And we also have the ancient DNA analysis from Denisovans as well as Neanderthals. So we know that there was some introgression between Neanderthals and Denisovans as well as modern humans. So it is getting really crowded, a lot of different species or even we don't know subspecies, they were present at the same time at that period of human history. The Harbin skull has been dated to be about 146,000 years ago. And this is known as the Middle Pleistocene Age. And the northern province of Heilongjiang, where this fossil skull was found, is an extremely cold region. The temperatures can go as low as minus 12 degrees centigrade. So the scientists think that the fossil skull bears many features which show that it was already acclimated to that particularly cold environment. Now this is the analysis that the scientists have put together. As I said, there is no genetic analysis that we have from the Harbin skull. But according to the anatomic analysis based on the different anatomic points in the human skulls of various different fossils that have been found, this was, I think, close to 55 fossils of different hominins, Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo rhodesiensis, Neanderthals, Denisovans. So based on that analysis, so the scientists have presented a very controversial finding. So the thing is, they are showing that this is the Harbin group, which is the Harbin skull along with the other skulls that have been found, and the Homo sapiens group, they form a separate lineage and Neanderthals diverged earlier about a million years ago. Now this is also controversial because Neanderthals according to current estimates they did not extend as far back as one million years ago. It is currently estimated that Neanderthals and modern humans shared a common ancestor about 400,000 years ago. So this is really off the mark, which may be due to the statistical analysis that they have been doing. They used a particular form of analysis called the Bayesian tip dating, which might have been the reason why they came up with so different numbers, but we don't know yet. This is still one of the first papers to come out. They have released three papers, but still a lot more analysis needs to be done. So as I said, the situation is getting really really crowded we have the overall path here from the for the analysis of different hominins but if we consider the different species existing at almost the same time this is one million year ago so we have Denisovans Neanderthals Heidelbergensis Homo longi so this is the dragon man It has been tentatively named as Homo longi after the Longjiang province. This is the modern, anatomically modern humans, Homo sapiens, Homo naledi. So you can see that at some point of time in the world, all of these species were coexisting. 
Now, how was this mix and match going on? It's really complicated and it will take some more genetic analysis as well as more fossils which are really, really rare to find to uncover the actual details what are going on, what's going on. This is the Dali skull. Now, as I said in my earlier figure here, this is the Dali group, the Harbin human group. So based on the analysis of a previously known skull, the Dali skull, this was found in 2008 and this is about 200,000 years old skull. So pretty old skull. So based on the analysis of Dali skull, it was found in the Yunnan province, which is located in the southwest of China. This, based on the anatomic analysis, the scientists have now put Dali as well as many other fossils found in China into the same lineage. So it is not sure whether the Homo daliensis, the Dali skull or the uh, Homo longi, which is the dragon man, they are the same species or a different species. We don't know yet, but the Dali lineage is now estimated from the statistical analysis. This is our Harbin skull. And as you can see, this is the Dali skull. And these are the other Chinese fossils. Now, there are a couple of questions remaining as is always the case in science. You solve one question, you come up with 10 more questions. Here I'm just presenting three more questions that are really the burning questions in paleontologists' minds. Whether it was a different species, Homo longi, Harbin man, Dragon man, Harbin skull, was it a different species? It is really hard to know. The biological species concept is already pretty fuzzy and it is really hard even more to get to the species concept with just the fossil record. So it is very important that scientists can get some ancient DNA from the skull. Hopefully it is not degraded and they can sequence it and do some genetic analysis. As I said, genetic analysis is really important comparing it to the other available ancient genomes, for example, Neanderthals and Denisovans and modern humans to see where they fit into the lineage, how much introgression they may have. And finally, ancestry. Ancestry is a big topic of controversy around here. Scientists are really divided. How does this lineage fit into the overall human ancestry? So this brings us to an important point about paleontological research also. Because earlier, the human fossil research as well as human ancestry research was mostly focused in Europe. Only later, it was shifted to Africa and then we realized that it is the Africa, which is the birthplace of modern humans, the out of Africa hypothesis and so on. And now more and more fossils are coming from the Asia where, where more and more research is being done. And so more and more fossils are being uncovered. Even as far as Papua New Guinea and Australia, some roots of these fossils have been discovered. Some remains have been discovered. So it remains to be seen how the human species, modern humans and their earlier ancestors spread into these spaces from Africa to Europe into Asia and then to China and other parts of the globe. So it is really a fascinating story and this is just one part of it. So there is a lot of controversy regarding this topic. So but that's how science progresses with more evidence and more questioning. So that was my discussion of the Harbin skull or the dragon man. Hope you like this discussion. If you have any doubts, comments or questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.